Hello, in this video I'm going to use the TI Inspire CX student software to show you how to manipulate nSolve or numerical solve to find two answers for a quadratic equation. Okay, so accessing nSolve you need to click menu 3, which is algebra and then one numerical solve and you should get n solve now you don't necessarily need to click it on the screen you could click menu three one so, sorry not that menu three one now if you have the computer program you can just click menu three one or you could type or click menu then type three one on your keyboard or if you have the physical calculator, you can also just click menu three one. So let's say we have w squared equals one. Okay. So in a quadratic equation, we should get two answers or a maximum of two answers. Okay. So with regular and solve, we would type comma w okay and you would get an answer so i see here the answer is one now if i wanted a second answer i could type in something like one w equals 100 or i could type in something like w equals negative 100 and you will see that when I type in negative 100, I get a second answer. I get negative one. But when I used W equals 100, I got the same answer as just comma W. Okay, uh, so let's, let's do a harder question. Let's say we have menu three, one, X squared, equals 100 okay I'm gonna do comma X now it's your choice if you just want to do comma X first I prefer to do comma X equals 100 and I get 10 now if I do negative 100 I get negative 10 so if you just choose to do X equals 100 and not do just the X uh, you're not going to have to do it three times. Okay, so this works for uh, just taking or solving a quadratic equation using square roots. You could also use it for zero product property. So if I were to do menu three, one, and let's say my question says x, x minus one equals zero. So this is saying x times x minus one in parentheses equals zero. I would do comma x equals 100. Enter. Now, you might get the error. This is invalid implied multiply. What this means is if you have an x and a parentheses next to each other, you cannot do that. So to get around that, you would need to put a multiplication symbol in between x and the parentheses, the left parentheses. Now when you click enter, you should get an answer of 1. To copy a uh, something that's already in there, you click the up arrow twice, and click enter, and it copies it. So I'm just going to put negative 100. Click enter, and I get the answer of 0. Now, if I want to check this mentally, very easy. 0 times anything equals 0. That checks out. Here I have 1. 1 times 1 minus 1. Well, 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 0 equals 0. So this, in fact, does work. So this would work for zero product property. Another example I may have is menu 3, 1. Let's say if t minus 9, t plus 18 equals 0. Be careful with your parentheses. Make sure it's open and closed at the start. Now here I would put comma 
t equals 100. In the last question, I put a multiplication symbol. This one, you should not need it. And as you can see, it's not required. It automatically reads it as multiplication. So my first answer would be 9. Copy it, change this to negative 100, and I should get negative 18. So this works for zero product property. Let's just say you're factoring quadratic equations. So it can be anything. We do menu 3, 1. Let's say of z squared minus 11z equals 0. So instead of taking a greatest common factor of z and then using zero product property, we can just type it in comma z equals 100, enter, I get 11. Check for my second answer, z equals negative 100, my answer is zero. So this works for just factoring any type of equation that is quadratic, okay? So if you have the exponent of two as your highest degree, you know it's quadratic, and that's where you would want to use z equals 100, z equals negative 100, okay? I hope this video helps you solving quadratic equations in the TI Inspire CX student software. Good luck.